speak to you. Nobody cares to be take care of these people's family. Mm -hmm. Is that what we want? That's not what we want. So Nigerian government must not even allow these mediocres, you know, to be mortgaging the right of Nigerians. You know, we need to value human's life. Every day people are being killed and somebody from the army will just come and dismiss this thing. So I think it is time that you know the, the army looks yeah it is time it is time that but, the army but, starts you know to stop all this um you know responding in a haste without uh, looking at um you know um really the content look at what how they took close the whole thing was uh, they, they gave uh, unicef ultimatum to leave mm. they didn't even know that unicef is a government mm. an intelligent person would have told you that unicef is even a government Nigeria is signatory to the United Nations. Nigeria is funding UNICEF. Nigeria is paying UNICEF. The building that even UN is staying is Nigerian government that donated that. So before you even do this reaction, you know, that you will now come and regret and withdraw, why can't you just replay? Why can't you just have some little constraint in the way you respond? You know, because this is a response for a, polit a, polit a politician. A professional should not be doing that. So I'm calling on the Nigerian security, the army, to please be more professional and stop, you know, being political. And if they have evidence of uh, subversion, they should publish that. Exactly, too. exactly. Let them publish it. We are patriotic Nigerians and we challenge them. Is it that there is no clashes happening? Or is it that Nigerians are not being killed? Or is it that Nigerians are getting the timely and adequate responses when this violence is happening? Look at what is happening in Zampara, you know. Look at what is happening in Bunungwari, in Kaduna. People are being killed like ants. No responses in time. In fact, as even as, speak, as I speak to you, the people in Zampara has been at the receiving end of these violent clashes, you know. And nobody is saying, nobody is doing anything, you know. So if we then speak, who would speak for these poor people? Who would speak for these voiceless people? All right, just like you said, the army uh, responded harshly, but they are not alone in that response. In a statement on Monday evening, President Buhari's spokesperson, Gabba Shehu, said the federal government is increasingly concerned about the role of Amnesty International uh, in the war against terror in Nigeria. While President Muhammad Buhari cherishes and encourages the noble ideals on which institutions such as Amnesty International are founded, the organization's operation in Nigeria seems geared towards damaging the morale of the Nigerian military. It often appears as if, if the Nigerian government is fighting two wars on terror against Boko Haram and against Amnesty International. The obvious bias and inaccuracies in Amnesty International's recent country report on Nigeria risk Amnesty's reputation as, a, as an impartial international organization. President Buhari appeals to the leadership of Amnesty International to scrutinize its advocacy in Nigeria, especially as it relates to the war against terrorism. Now, before the presidential statement, Amnesty International had rejected the allegation by the army. The army's threat to shut down Amnesty International or any human rights organization is not the solution to the negligence or the failure of the untimely response to the issue and human rights of human rights and providing security for Nigeria. Amnesty International Nigeria Chair Awa Rapsanjani said on Monday, what's the worst thing that can happen if the military now decides to shut down Amnesty International office? How are we going? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me tell you, you see, that sometimes when you hear some of this statement, you laugh. Yeah. The army cannot shut down the operation of Amnesty International. It On cannot. what basis? How how would they operate? How do you, how are you going to are you going to but, stop but, us? But, but wait, wait, the wait, report wait, wait. Let them bring their fact. We are talking about you know um, you know fact here. We are not talking about bias. We are not talking about politics. We are not politician. If they choose to be politician, let them go and do. And what I want to advise some of the people that are speaking on behalf of government, they should be very careful. Because yeah, today, sure. today they can be talking like this, and tomorrow, day two, they can be victim of human rights abuses. So if you condemn you know, human rights organizations that are protecting and promoting the rights of Nigerians, tomorrow, is, when your right is, you know, <laughs> is undermined or is affected, then you start looking for amnesty to speak for you. To you, know? you and then let me tell you, uh, people like um, Gerber Show, sometimes when they speak, I just laugh. 
because they didn't even they didn't they didn't even have any access to the president to consult him on this kind of thing. What do you Isa, mean? I am telling you today. Karpa, listen, is the I said, of the president. I said, I said, I am telling you some of the statements that are coming are not coming from the president. They just sit down because they want to look good. By so doing, they damage even the government and they damage the president. And that is why you see there's no coherence even in the government. They will say something, president will say something. If there's a you know coherent, if there's consultation, if there is understanding, if they are speaking as one mm -hmm. government, you will not be hearing what the president will say, the, you know, different, different what government <laughs> will say different, what additional will say different. That is just to tell you that they are just trying to just you know uh, please their you know their boss. Unfortunately, in so doing, they even damage the government. You know, so th there's no need to respond when you don't have anything to say because you will just make yourself a laughing stock well, you know Rafsa Jani, this is a very weighty report how could he not have access to the president before going to press no press of papers and press and papers Grava Show did not even read this report if you read this report we have made a balanced report we have been to many bledges we have conducted over 260 interviews we have met with so many communities we have so many documented things and that is why before we even launched the report you know we even brought in the communities affected that's the headers and the farmers if you were there at the launch yesterday these two groups we were there near Tiala was there the different communities you know from Benue, Plateau and all the rest of the places we brought them together and they all commended the effort that Amnesty is doing to draw the attention of government look we are not fighting government we are not fighting security. All we are saying, please take necessary action to protect the life of Nigerians. I don't, I, don't, I don't see how that becomes a problem. And when we come with documented evidences of negligence, pure negligence, and when even the government itself is fighting you know, corruption in the security sector, I wonder what you know, um, um, show will be talking about. Is it not the same bad administration that is you know, um, prosecuting people who have stolen money, who in the past will have raised alarm, and the same dismissal was made during Jonathan, that what we are saying is not correct. But now, the present government is now agreeing with what we are saying, because we have provided evidence, we provide them with information that, look, this is what has happened. And they, you know, they are prosecuting some people now. So now, you know, Mr. Paul, them, to say, okay, let's look at this report. Where did we go wrong? Or where has not, where, what is not working? So that we can improve. In all honesty, you know that these clashes have been happening. You know that Jaden, they have been monitoring, they have been hearing, they have been seeing a lot of families lost their families, lost their blood one. Yesterday, a blind lady was telling us she lost 22 members of our family because of these clashes. And you say we should not speak because they don't have access to come in to speak, you know, to government because nobody is going to listen to them. You know, I reported cases of killing, you know, of both sides. Reported. Yes, I reported cases because you cannot be everywhere. everywhere. Now, and these people didn't have access to coming to speak. Jani, your Amnesty International has done quite well in calling the government to take action. Has there been any time that Amnesty International was able to broker peace? among warring communities or factions is, is it not part of no 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 it's not it's not our work okay. we are not government see ngo they have their own limitation the highest ngo can do is to bring these issues to the government and you know urge them to take necessary step to make sure that you know these killings are stopped you know amnesty is not um, um, involved a in those uh, it's not a peace mediation organization amnesty can only you know, document these facts and bring before government so that government can take action. And where in other places in the world where governments are responsible, are responsible, when issues like this come, they take this report serious, they study it, they, you know, verify it, and they take action. But in the case of Nigeria, because both the security and the politician are now unfortunately the same, they, they, they will not even read the content of the report. They will start dismissing it. Secondly, under the current administration, which shocked us, they had been actually, you know, uh, planted some so-called NGO who 
before they even read the report, they see the report, they will start condemning. And when they are doing that, villagers, ordinary poor people, they are laughing at them because they know that these are hired, you know, sponsored characters who you then after they do that dismissal, they collect their money from you know them, they will disappear. Mm -hmm. So, but in the case of the new civil society organization that are doing this, and they have been consistent, they have been doing this. I have been doing this work for over 26 years of my life. Mm -hmm. And everyone who knows me, he knows this is the position that I have been on. You know? Now, Raf Sanjani, if you've been calling government to notice on all these violations and you realize that the government does not have capacity to act, what is the way forward? No, oh, the government must have the capacity to act because, ah. because that is why they are there. They are there to defend the lives and property of Nigerians. So if you say they don't have the capacity, it means that they, they should close up and go. Mm. That's not the that's not a good uh, thing. No, look, government has constitutional responsibility and obligation to protect the lives, you know, and properties of Nigerians. Whether you are a security, whether you are a non-security, you you know you you are entitled to be protected. All right, you've been listening to Greetings 105.7, Abuja, the only radio station that brings it. Our Rafsan Jani, the chair of Amnesty International, is in our studio. We're very sorry, we're still expecting to get through to Major General S.K. Osman, the Army spokesman who would have uh, contributed to this conversation. But in his absence, you, the listeners, have your way. Uh, call us, feel free, 70 1057 and 070-1057-0909. These are two phone numbers you can reach us in the studio. And then begin to compose a text or send it via WhatsApp or SMS to 070-1057-0025. Don't forget, our Rafsan Jani is here. He is a political scientist from the Bayero University in Kano. And he is the CEO of Civil Society and Legislative Advocacy Center. It's nice meeting you for the first time, but I've been reading about you over the years, right from Kaduna and elsewhere. Thank what you. have the challenges been of fronting for an organization like Amnesty International? Well, first and foremost, as you know, Amnesty International is a global organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we are all over in the world, you know, doing the same work we are doing in Nigeria that is protecting and promoting the right of Nigerians, I mean, um, uh, people, be it in Kenya, be it in the US, be it in Britain, be it in, you know, everywhere, whether it is Europe, whether Asia, Africa, you know, everywhere, Amnesty International is there and is speaking for the people. So, it is, Amnesty is, you know, interested to see that right of, uh, people are protected and we do promotion of human rights. Don't forget, okay, hold even... On, in the, hold on, we have a call from Monday from Maraba. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Yeah, our Rapsa Good morning. Jan. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you very much. Yeah, he raised this caller raised an issue. Military burials. The soldiers that die in battlefront. Does Amnesty have any access to information on who and who died and how? No, we are not like I told you, you know, we you know our role is not that, but we are just concerned, you know, over the massive loss of humans, you know. 
lives. And we are saying that you know some of this is as a result of corruption in the security sector. Some of this is as a result of negligence. Some of this is as a result of the fact that you know uh, our security you know officers are not given you know adequate you know modern equipment to okay. be able to fight okay, this incident. Usman from Pape. Good morning. Yes, our Rafs and Jani, just in case you're just tuning in, let's read some messages that have arrived since we started the conversation. All right, good morning, Martin. We should collectively support our military and call the bluff of some of these NGOs and their local collaborators. We must not surrender our sovereignty to saboteurs. If amnesty is found culpable, they should be sent packing. Iduku Austin from Mararaba sent this message. And... Um, and this other one says, my regards to the guest speaker who has said it all. Let the Nigerian military adjust properly to the expectations and demands of Amnesty International. Instigating a shutdown of Amnesty International offices in Nigeria and as well, never, will never be the solution. Such action would worsen our nation's image and project the government in bad light. I want to ask the guest speaker, has Amnesty International been found guilty in their duties anywhere in the world before now? Well, Prince Ugo sent that. I have Emmanuel from Maraba. No, I lost him. Please, Emmanuel, call, call back. Uh, and then, good morning. Peter from Pape. Our elder statesman, retired General T.Y. Danjuma, who understand military operations, cried out that uh, the, the military were giving cover to terrorists against the people. And that issue is still in our minds. Well, and those are text messages. And then this other message here says, Good morning, gentlemen. Now, before I read that, let me quickly take this call. Emmanuel, good morning, sir. Mm.
All right, thank you very much, Emmanuel. Rounds and Johnny will comment on that quickly. Good morning, gentlemen. I salute your guest for his the work he is doing. I want to say that this government does not believe that people are dying daily in the country. They don't even believe that there is hardship in the land. And if amnesty is cracked, that means we are being governed by military dictatorship. And may God protect the rank and file in the military. How about from Karashi sent that message? Very unfortunately, we have less than two minutes to go, but Rafsanjani will have all of that time. Now, Mr. Martin, may God bless Rafsanjani for speaking the naked truth, especially about Mr. Garbashehu's information. It's very unfortunate for the army to be threatening to close the Amnesty International office. Young Pak Iwari, who listens to us online, thank you very much. Rafsanjani, quickly, does the military have the power to dismiss international organizations such as UNICEF and Amnesty? That's why I say it's just sometimes it's a very funny, you know, and um, <laughs> inconsequential threat because you cannot, you know, close what you do not um, have the power or the responsibility to do. That's one. But I quickly want to respond to some of these people that have been mislead or misguided. See, if you attack human rights defenders, Tomorrow, you will be a victim of human rights abuse, either by a powerful individual, either by a powerful politician, or powerful, you know, um, individual, or even by a security agent. And then that is the time when you start looking for Amnesty International to come and defend you. So, mind their language. We are living in a society where powerful, they always have their way. You know, injustice is all over. So, if you undermine the effort that Amnesty International is doing, to draw the attention of government, to take it to responsibility, then tomorrow you will not have anybody that will speak, you know, for the you know, um, poor people who have no access to anybody that would, you know, um, help them, you know, protect them. So that is one. Number two, I want to make it clear, make it clear again that we are not joining issue with any security, you know, official here. What we are doing is to say, look, live up to your expectation. Take timely you know, action to prevent violence because killing is not good and we cannot continue to lose, you know, our population, our people, just on the basis of some, in many instances, carelessness. Some of the communities that they experience these attacks, you know, they, com they communicated to authority, nobody come to their aid, nobody come to rescue them. So it is not, uh, we are not politicians and for anybody who think that uh, what Amnesty, you know, is doing is not, um, um, okay, that's fine. Wait till when they come to deal with you. Then you will now know that there is an organization called Amnesty. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, our Rafsanjani, for coming. Rafsanjani.